निरसन जाएगा तो पंद्रह रुपए ले पांच रुपए ले आते हैं अन्य बिस्तर बिस्तर बेचता ही गए हो अब लास्ट में मैं अब लास्ट अंदर में मर पुगियो अंदर में बनी अब क्या गर्म करो मैं जोश तो लास्ट में ये लेग दिया था मैं ये लाइक बस बस में पड़ जा सांदी अन्य के यूं रात भर यूं जब पे मर पार्टी बनी थे Part of the Trans Himalayas, the region is arid, cold, and inhospitable. It is home to the tough mountain communities who have lived for centuries in high altitude settlements nestled among the gigantic mountains. Geography plays a vital role in shaping the culture and tradition of the people in the region. Buddhism is the main religion in the whole of Upper Mustang with history of shamanistic and Bampu traditions. Thay village is located in Sokang administrative division, about 20 kilometers east of Sarang near Lomangtan, the capital of Mustang. Standing at 3,860 meters above sea level, the village experiences a moderate summer and a very harsh winter. Upper Mustang does not experience monsoon as it lies in the rain shadow zone of the Himalayas, which makes life here extremely difficult. The 24 houses in Thay are home to 170 people brave enough to live here, along with the thousands of livestock they own. देह गांव को इतिहास को कुरा करने पर दाखिल किया होगा ना देह गांव को इतिहास तो नहीं कायू बाढ़ शुरू होने सा कायू बने को सा नहीं दामोदर कुंड को नजीक रा प्रिगुडी माल को मुनी ये वाला सानो कैली सा त्यान से नहीं एकदम राम दो बरखा मार से नहीं एकदम राम दो कांस होने तो त्यान से नहीं 40-50 घर � अनि यहाँ को लोकल इतिहास अनुसार क्या बन सकता है नहीं त्यां बट गायी बाढ़ तो नहीं यहाँ जो उनको बने था उनमें उहाँ मां मानसे साले रहा है भाई अब सौनू को कारण त्यां गए रहे अतः फिर क्या देखें जब बंदा फिर त्यो जानी रह गायी को बस्ती बसे को ठाउं से त्यां ये तो नराम सब पहले गए को तो म सायद एक दो बरस एक से दूसरे बरस पसारी या पानी को समस्या भाई रहा यहाँ को मानसिक और जाने और ये को तत्काल ये को बस पोस्टी भाई को ठामा सारे सारे को रहा सब 36 year old Kunsan 
lives with his younger brother, Natuhisi. The two brothers spend most of the year in the pasture land looking after the livestock. Nakto looks after the goats and Kunsan, the yak herd. Kunsan also has to find time to work in the village and at the apple plantation in Tangchung, Jambali. Several separate pastures are used for goats and for yaks. Kunsan and his brother spend different seasons of the year moving between these pastures. But the grass available for the animal is decreasing. 25 years ago, there were more than eight families with yaks in Dhei. Today, Kunsang Rinzen's family are the only yak herders left in the village. The rest of the community is now highly dependent on the family's yaks. Villagers are free to collect yak droppings from the pasture land. This has helped the whole community meet its fuel and fertilizer needs. Yak butter is also an important part of Loa tradition. Butter tea made using yak butter is highly valued. Yak butter is considered pure and holy and is a must-have ingredient in ceremonies and festivals in this predominantly Nigma Buddhist village. Yagamadu <laughs> If Kumsan Rinzen cannot keep his yachts, it will be a loss not just for him but for the whole community and culture. is also an important part of the local diet and dried yak meat is considered a real luxury. The herders consume livestock that are attacked or killed by predators. This winter, a two-year-old calf was killed by a snow leopard and Kunsang Rinzen will enjoy its meat for some time. Meat stays edible for quite a long time because of the low temperatures and dry air. Dried meat is vital, especially in winter months. Domestic animals such as cows, zopas, and horses are also important to the community. Decrease in pasture land is affecting these animals too.
When the snow starts to melt, it forms a small stream above the village. The water is collected in reservoirs starting in early spring. The start of water collection is an important occasion, marked by a small ceremony where yak butcher and song offerings are performed by the village chiefs. Water collection in the reservoirs also marks the start of work in the fields of Thay. There are more than two dozen small reservoirs, some private and some communal. As precipitation is decreasing, reservoirs are left empty and the community is slowly dying. Thay village, like most of Nepal's rural regions, relies on rain-fed subsistence agriculture. Crops like barley, wheat, buckwheat, oats, mustard, potatoes and peas form the staple diet. But as drought creeps in, the people must watch their fields waste away. With no water, no assistance and no information, villagers have no choice but to abandon their land. Even with a good harvest, people hardly produce enough to support themselves for three to four months of the year. Abandoned fields and broken canals can be seen all around Thay. Thay village may be isolated and remote, but it is not living in the past. Modern technologies and advancement have reached the village. The community is aware of the development outside. Subsidized solar lights can be found in every house. Landlines and mobile phones connect villagers to their friends and families outside. Disaster has struck fast for the community in Thay, leaving them with no option but to migrate once again. Out of the 24 households in Thay village, 10 have already migrated to other parts of Nepal. There aren't many people to work and drink Chang, the local wine, together anymore. Abandoned houses are rapidly turning into ruins. The village has lost its former glory and is slowly becoming a ghost town. The remaining villagers are finding it hard to keep the culture and tradition alive without the others who have left. Normally, mountain community, especially Mustang, yeah, they may be. No, yes, sir. Now, very close community. Oh, yeah, actually, our class, sir, no, sir, you know, your society exists. Oh, no, no. Yeah, then, one time, 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 one अब खेत खान खेत को काम देखें ले रहा कुलो बनाने काम देखें ले रहा अब यो बाखरा आरु ये ने काम देखें ले रहा यो सब भी सब भी काम में जानी गांव ले आरु ले एक और काले सह गरने पर्स रह गरी गरनु ने पर्स रह गरी रह एको बनी सां अब उनसे निश्चित को उसमें क्या सब बनी बिचारा वो या को पसारी उसको भाई बाखरा दुई जाना बॉय पसी के वो नहरी उन्हर लेते नहीं गांव को काम में सही करना साउदे में बेहाउं दे ना बेहाउं नहीं है दर्दी कर सा आई ना तो रा नौ बाय को उसमें से किस समय गांव को नियम अनुसार ले कानून अनुसार ले यानी चिपटन में छेपा बन सा छेपा बन बोलते हैं फाइन अब जल्दी फाइन हो जस्ते कुलो बनाऊ गांव को काम होता है फिरी कोई जाना पाए ना पड़े जानी ले गांव गांव ले तो के वो अंसार को छिपाती है रतिनु पर्स। The tragedy of Thay can be seen repeated throughout Upper Mustang, with the drastic reduction in food production and sharp decline in the number of livestock. Locals in many Himalayan communities 
are on the verge of famine. Children are particularly vulnerable to malnutrition and other diseases that come with it. Survival is becoming tougher for all living beings in the Himalayas, people, plants and animals alike. Yaks are among the first to go. Changes in weather patterns in the Himalayas are thought to have led to deaths of many yaks. The loss of a single yak can mean the loss of more than a year's income for a family here. With the pasture gone and the sources of water rapidly drying, herders are finding it hard to keep their animals alive. They would rather cut their losses and sell the remaining animals before they die. With the animals gone, a part of the tradition and culture is also being lost. There are already a few villages in Upper Mustang where the yaks are gone and with them a huge part of the community's identity. The number of nomads and nomadic communities are decreasing very quickly in Upper Mustang. Yet Kunsang Rinzen is striving his best to keep his yak herd under the changing conditions. Kungsan Rinzen's long day starts with a prayer. Like everyone else in the region, he takes sampa for breakfast. Sampa mixed with yak butter and sugar, accompanied with tea, makes a good diet for a hard day's work. When in a rush, Kungsan uses his gas stove. It is common to see such stoves in the village nowadays. Yak herders like Kunsa and Rinzen lead a nomadic life, dependent on their animals for survival. Kunsa normally lives alone in the mountains, moving from pasture to pasture. He spends the whole year looking for good pastures for his yaks. Once he finds a pasture, he puts up this well-woven tent made of yak wool to protect himself from snow and water. Kungsan also survives the harsh mountain temperatures using clothes made of yak wool. Seasonal mobility between grazing areas is vital to the herders. But with the changes in climate patterns and variation in precipitation, some ancestral pasture lands have become unreliable and unproductive. Other pastures have been overgrazed because of this. Kungsan keeps on moving his herd from one to another pasture, 
but his herds simply don't have enough grass to feed on. Pasture lands are quickly drying and less grass is growing. There is no practice of growing fodder crops as an alternative in the region, and things look set to get worse. Aile di yung yung parti parti na yung ra yut kaya masapani yut na na pare ko karan le saran sa tiri tiyas ba pare ba ni yek dum chulu chulu parti na chulu pare ba si na sa ina ko dela ma parsa ani yu gansla iti tiki yu onde na payda onde na tiyas ko karan le yaga ro dery morsa ti gansla ro iti tiki ramlo onde na ti In the winter months, Kung San moves his yachts to Pew, which is a place nestled on a hilltop at around 3,900 meters, where grass is normally found in abundance. The only water source in Pew is from winter snowfall, and once the snow has melted, he has to move his herd higher up to Kya at about 4,500 meters. <laughs> 